They gave up on God Disillusion and hurting inside We are the city City of refuge We are the heart in the raging storm We are the king We will not give up Until we see the broken lives restored We are the help in distress Not a haven of rest Our covering to keep them warm Welcome to the City Church of Dallas web broadcast. God is doing something so awesome. We just finished the service. There's still a, a lingering of the presence of God. It's just special what God is doing. One man today received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One of our young men, one of our ushers. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. There is a tangible presence of God in this room. God's going to touch you as you watch this broadcast. Thousands of people in countries all around the world on every continent are watching. So get ready for God to move into your life and welcome to City Church of Dallas. But somehow God brought you through. Somehow the hand of God touched you and there was peace. Somehow God's miracle working power came and there was a miracle in your body. There was a miracle in your life. You wonder why I act so crazy sometimes it's because he's my everything. He's my everything. Without him, I am nothing. We want to sing about it tonight. Everything, everything, everything. Lord, you are everything. Everything.
Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for all of the good things you've done for me. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings. I thank you for helping me when there was no help. I thank you for making a way when there was no way. I thank you for touching me, Lord. I thank you for leading me and guiding me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. ago, uh, a word came forth that it was Pentecost Sunday. Was that last Sunday? Last Sunday. Two Sundays ago. That in the next 50 days, we were going to experience like a 50-year jubilee. Debts canceled. It happened that morning. And slaves were set free after every 50 years. And Pentecost means 50. And on Pentecost Sunday, and, and I said that 50, and then Dad Miller right back there said, I hear the Lord saying seven. I hear the Lord saying seven. Well, the 50th day from that day two weeks ago was 7-7, seven, seven, July 7th, 2013. So I want you to prepare in your heart and prepare in your life. Get your ex expectation ready for debts canceled in the next... 50 days ending the 7th of July, debts canceled, and being set free, delivered from depression, delivered from addiction, delivered from anything that's attacking you or affecting you, from lack, from poverty, and get ready for freedom in these next 50 days. Hallelujah. So we got to claim it. We got to decree it. We have to believe it and claim it with our the confession of our lips, right? Hallelujah.
tell you if you're hurt and broken hearted oh, 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 oh there is freedom yeah oh, yes. freedom reigns in this place oh the showers of mercy
see our crew from Denton here. It's time to sow. We're gonna we're gonna follow that word. What are you needing in your life? What are you wanting in your life? Sow, plant, finances to see that return. Children, we love you. We're so glad you're here. You're awesome. God bless you. You're important. You're special. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. You can give a credit card or debit card. If you're writing a check, make it to City Church of Dallas. I need an envelope. Please, too. How many appreciate Sister Aretha and the ushers of this house? Serving us to help us. This is their tithe and offering. Uh, at the end of the service, we've got something very special we're going to give to, so I want you to be aware of that. I don't want you to think we're going to sneak up on you, but we're going to receive a very special missionary offering at the end of the service. So we don't want to, we don't want to um, forget that. I want to let make you aware of that as you're sowing the tithe and offering right now. This this goes to City Church, and let me tell you, on Tuesday I'm taking a City Church check, and I'm going up to Denton. And I am buying our bus. Some of you have given. We need you to give today for that. We need you to be aware of that. We're going to be able to pick up people from the Austin Street shelter. We're going to be able to pick people from Heritage House, where we've been doing our uh, Friday night supper clubs and feeding over 1,500 meals now. We're going to be able to pick people up at different places and bring them here. Uh, the bus only has 8,900 miles on it. It's a big, giant bus. So now we got to pray and ask God where we're going to park it. <laughs> I, I, just said, I just see two words in front of me, Gary and Sharon. I don't know. <laughs> oh. But it'll 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 blend in much better when we paint it bright blue and chartreuse green. So sad that I know that that's called that. All right. What? So get ready to sew. Um, you know we didn't know how we were going to get that bus. We didn't know how we were going to pay rent. We didn't know how we were going to pay the stuff we got to pay. And it looked scary just a few days ago. And, and Steve texts me these words. He says, I'm praying for you, Angie, Dee Dee. I'm praying for daily suddenlies to happen in your life. And I'm telling you, every day since he sent me that text, without exception, we have gotten a financial miracle in this house. People who you don't know, people I've never met, watching this on YouTube, Alex, and your wonderful media ministry here. Share everyone involved in that media ministry. Over 80,000 views. God's using us to touch more people than we can fit in this place. It's not going to be long before we're going to have to have another building to accommodate the harvest of souls that God is bringing in. So I want you to get ready to sow for what you need in your life, what you need in the future. I don't know of a better place in the whole world better to sow than City Church of Dallas. Honestly, this money goes to good use. We're seeing lives changed and turned around, and it's only the beginning. Hallelujah. So take about, give them, ushers, give them about 30 seconds, a minute, to let God speak. And when you're ready to sow, in about a minute, I want you just to come and receive this tithe and this offering. Sing.
Send that to you. Postage paid and free of charge. 
Francis, you and the elders, come, we're going to pray for the sick. Oh, that was awesome. Right here at City Church, we have Jimmy Swagger. Now, I'm so excited, all the way from Lakewood in Houston, Texas, please welcome Pastor Joel Osteen. Well, I am so delighted to be here, and I just want you all to know that Victoria wished she could have made it, but she got caught up in a fire flight. Uh, but we just want you to know that you don't have to be a victor. You don't have to be a victim. You can be a victor. If you believe that, I know you do. I really know you do. God bless you. <laughs> we don't make fun to make fun. We just make fun to laugh. All right. <laughs> My dear friend for a long time is Cody Holly. Uh, we were raised in the same kind of background, Pentecostal, and he's so, so incredible. He was a big, at a big old church doing three services this morning, and we're so blessed to have him do some special music for us today. I'm so excited. Please welcome my dear friend from Louisiana, De Quincey, Louisiana. Please welcome Cody Holly. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. And I'll get you back for that later. <laughs> You know, this song Pastor Jeff and Pastor Clint Brown and I wrote, it's called I'm Stepping In. Y'all can roll it whenever. But uh, it's called I'm Stepping In, and we wrote this in uh, just a short amount of time. You crank it on up. There you go. And you got to step out of some things before you can step into some things. Look at your neighbor and ask him, say, what you been stepping in? Listen, huh? I'm stepping out of my old way of thinking. Stepping out of the trauma pain. I'm stepping out of the sand that was sinking. Without a doubt, I'm ready for change. I'm stepping in to new realms of glory. I'm moving on to greater things. Oh, I, I stake my claim on new territory. Marching to my destiny. Marching to my destiny.
what you speak will be established and what you bind and what you lose is bound and loosed in heaven so we agree we agree and we believe I'll put 10,000 to flight.
want to tell you about a few things real quickly. Uh, I give honor to Pastor Jeff Ferguson, my dear friend. Thank you so much, Pastor, for having me. And uh, I am honored. And uh, wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is incredible. Look what the Lord has done. But it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning of what God is going to do. Um, I give you greetings from Lake Charles, Louisiana, where God lives. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and where the food is right. But, uh, no, y'all got some pretty good barbecue over here. Um, but I want to tell you about a few things. Uh, I have um, Saturate in the back. I'm getting ready to sing Saturate in just a moment. And, uh, but this has 11 songs on it. Pastor Clint Brown. Don't y'all love Pastor Clint Brown? Yes. He produced this album. And uh, Pastor Jeff and I, and he have several songs we co-wrote together. And then Pastor Clint and I co-wrote a couple of songs on here. And I've got my song Saturate, which was... Uh, on um, Vicky Yoey's nomi Grammy nominated album. Now I got two Grammys. I got a Grammy on my mama's side and I got a Grammy on my daddy's side. But I'm enlarging my capacity to receive that ain't gonna be all across my mantle over my nice limestone, uh, what is that, fireplace. You gotta speak those things. Anyhow, I can't get no help up in here. Anyway, so it's got it. My, it's my season with Pastor Clint Brown. It's got uh, awesome. uh, uh, be everything with uh, Nicole Binion on there with us, and so that's available for fifteen dollars in the bank. And then this is a message that I preach: Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. This is about David and Bathsheba. And uh, had David never got up, had David never got up, there would have never been a Solomon. That Solomon was the wisest man to ever live. And so had, had David never got up, there would have never been a Solomon. So what are you aborting in your destiny, your future, by not getting up? And, and, and condemnation comes from the enemy. And so if you're feeling condemned, you need to call it out, call it what it is, and rebuke it off of your life. And you need to step into greatness and dust yourself off and try again. And uh, Because you have more to reach for than you have to hold on to. And uh, so uh, you can't talk towards your past. You've got to talk towards your future. And so uh, this is available in the back. So if you know anybody that just can't seem to forgive themselves and get over it, you need to get this. It's got a DVD and a CD in there. I think i got seven left after this morning. But, uh, but you need to get your hands on that. This is also 15. It has a DVD and a CD of the message. So one message, two different formats. So you can give that a DVD to somebody to watch and you can listen to it in your car. And, uh, and then these cool little saturate bracelets and uh, wristbands, whatever. And uh, it's just, I'm like, hey, I'm in the overflow. Uh, you know, that's all. So, and you get all, all, everything on my table for $30 or it's 15 and 15 and 5. So that's my little commercial. Now we can get to ministry because I hate that kind of stuff. All right, let's go to saturate. Now saturate is a song that was, was given in a, a very dry place. God never wastes a tear. You can go ahead and roll it. He never wastes a tear. They're, your tears are bottled up. And um, I was going through a very difficult time. And I was uh, ministering in Alabama outside of Mobile. You, you crank it on up. You know me. And, and this, it just really, out of that hurt, out of that dry season I was going through, I began to sit at the piano and I said, God, I need you. I need you. I need to feel your presence. I hadn't felt his presence in so long. But I knew he hadn't left me, even though I couldn't feel him. I knew he hadn't left me according to his word. So I began to sit down and I wrote these words. Here I am. Once again. To spend some time.
to you. And I prayed this and I said, God, Lord, help me see what you see in me. Oh, wretched man that I am, that I might not walk in defeat. He's going to saturate you. He's going to saturate you. Thank you, sweet Lord. Saturate me, Jesus. I want to encourage somebody. You may have not felt the presence of God in a long time, but don't give up. Don't give up. His presence is real, and it's a very present help in a time of trouble. You may not feel it, but it is there according to His Word. And His Word trumps feelings any day of the week. Saturate Jesus to a place where I can see your face. Your face, your face. Thank you, Jesus. I would appreciate Cody Holly. We're so blessed to have him here. Um, it's so good to have Rob here. You moved here now. I'm so glad you are here. Uh, Eddie, I'm glad you are here. So glad. Liz, I'm glad you're here, darling. I'm so glad you're here. Amelia, Saver, so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here all the way from Turkey. <laughs> so I'm thrilled that... Uh, this is a place where we can come and experience the glory of God right where we are. Yes. Not when we get good enough, not when we obey enough of the rules, but right in the middle of what we're going through right now. This is a place where we can come and boldly come before the throne of grace. Isn't that an awesome thing? Amen. I thank God for this place. Make sure you let all these people from Denton know that you love them and they are welcome at City Church and we are so glad you are here. Make sure you let everybody that I mentioned and everybody, if you see someone you don't know, you tell them your name and you get their name and you make sure you make them feel loved, all right? This is a loving place. We want to make sure people experience the love of God. Uh, <clears throat> I know it's Memorial Day and we'll probably be done about on time. Usually go about 90 minutes. We may just be a few minutes over. And that's because we have a lot to do today. 
And um, one of the things that I want to talk to you about, uh, I, I'm not going to preach today, but Brother Miller, about um, a, f a few months ago, uh, Bob Perry, Pastor Bob, came into my life. Uh, I'm known of his church in Las Vegas. Uh, a lot of my friends would go there and minister. It was a big, big, dynamic church. Still is going strong. Uh, and he founded it and, and pastored it for 15 years. Then he moved, and everybody knows my pastor, Clint Brown. And he was uh, Clint Brown's associate, pastoring thousands of people down there. A phenomenal man of God. Moved back to his family here in Dallas, Texas. And he's been coming here, attending City Church of Dallas. He's been sowing and giving into the ministry here. And, and what he, what, what God only knew is that about two months ago, I was so discouraged. And I was so um, disheartened. And I, as a matter of fact, I called the leadership of the church, a lot of the leaders, into the conference room, and I said, y'all, I don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. So just whatever, you're, whatever role you're in, just do it with all your heart. Well, about half of them left, I think, the next day. <laughs> and Pastor Bob said, Jeff, you may not know how to do it. But the God on the inside of you knows how to do it. And he began to pour into my life and he began to encourage me. And, and he said, you know, City Church needs to have an identity more than everybody can come and worship. More than pastors kind of funny and, and, and can write songs and it's neon primary, you know, nursery school colors. And it needs to be more than that. People need, and so we begin to discuss core values, and we begin to seek God, and came up with core values for the church, and begin to minister on them. And I felt the foundation under my feet begin to strengthen. And you've seen, if you if you notice it, you've seen in the last three months things turn around in this church. You've seen my confidence restored. You, you, you've seen God restore this place and solidify the foundation for what we believe, what we want to see God do. And what you don't know is a big part of that is Pastor Bob Perry has been pouring into my life personally. So, so I want you to please welcome, to minister to us on this Memorial Day Sunday, Pastor Bob Perry, a true friend of City Church of Dallas. Don't you love your pastor today? What a great man of God. When God wants to bless you, He brings people into your life. When God wants to protect you, He removes people from your life. And I'm so thankful that several months ago, God, I, I don't know what I did, but I must have done something right. God wanted to supernaturally bless me, so he brought Pastor Jeff into my life and, I, and brought this church into my life. So I consider it a real privilege, a real honor to be able to be with you tonight. And I'm so thankful for your pastor. Thank you for being my friend. I don't have many friends, but I thank you that you're one of them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I, I don't want to take long. I, I just want to share my life message. I, I really believe that everyone is called into the ministry. Paul put it this way. We've all been called to the ministry of reconciliation. We've all been called to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ we've all been called to share Paul said to be I mean Peter said to be ready to give the reason for the hope that is within you we've all been called into active full-time ministry whether that's on the job in the neighborhood in the community in the family whatever it is we've all been called and we all have a life message we all have a, a message that God has put in our heart that is developing daily, that's being written and added to 
as we grow. And I just want to share my life message with you. Jeremiah 30, verse 17, I believe is one of, if not the most comforting, encouraging thoughts, messages, words in the entire Old Testament. Jeremiah 30, 17, this is Jeremiah speaking as the mouthpiece, as the oracle of God. Now, before we read this, just let me be a little pastoral tonight. I believe that every time we come together, one of three things will happen. I believe tonight the word that God's going to share with us, for many people in this room, it's going to be a word in season. A word that ministers right where we are. A word that, that just impacts every facet of our life. A word that, that revolutionizes our life because of what we're going through. That's a word in season. But I also believe there's those tonight that this is a word of preparation. This is a word that God is going to use to, to prepare your life because God knows what's around the corner. Isn't that comforting? God knows what's around the corner. So tonight, I believe for many this may be a word of preparation. And one last category, every time we come together, whether it's a Tuesday night, it's a Sunday evening, whether it's a Bible study, uh, or whether you're watching a ministry on TV, how many times have you been watching something or been in a service and the pastor or the minister calls up a verse and you go, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, I've heard that preached before. Oh, I, I, you know, I wish there would be something new for me. Well, maybe that's a word of equipping for you because God knows who's about to come into our path. Many times we'll find ourselves talking with someone, conversing with someone, someone's crying on our shoulder. And we remember what Pastor Jeff said three weeks ago. We remember what was ministered, and that was God equipping you for that moment to minister to that person. So tonight I believe one of three things, maybe all three things will be happening to your life. This will be a word in season. This will be a word of preparation. This will be a word of equipping. Amen? Is that okay? Do you believe that tonight? That one of these three things, I believe, is what's going to happen. Father, we pray tonight for hearing ears, for open hearts, receptive minds. Father, we pray right now that you will take the logos by the power of your Holy Spirit. Take the written word and turn it into rhema, to living word for each and every one of us right now. Pray this with me. Say, Father God in heaven. Father God in heaven. Come on, pray it out like you mean it. Say, Father God in heaven. I open myself up to receive everything that you have for me tonight. I will not leave this place the way I came in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. My life message is very simply this. God will restore. God will restore. Because I'm in the process of restoration. I'm in, I am a restoration project in process right before your eyes I believe this is so powerful and so encouraging and so and so comforting because this verse the Lord says not your neighbor not your banker not your attorney not your wealthy aunt not your wealthy in-laws God says I personally am going to oversee the restoration process in your life. For the Lord says three words that will completely change everything. I will restore. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. Do you believe the promises of God? Yes. Peter put it this way. That we are partakers of the divine nature of God through the promises that we access everything that God is through His precious promises. So tonight, we're going to access the divine nature of God. He is the one who will restore.
That's his nature. That's his bent on our life. That's his perspective on our life. That's the way he views our life. That he is the one that will restore. Five major promises that God has of restoration in our life. Five major, now there may be more, but these are the ones that God ministered to me. The five major areas that God promises restoration in our life. Number one is right here in Jeremiah 30, 17. I will restore health. Amen. Now, if you study that word out, health, it's better translated well-being. Go your way, Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. This word health is better translated well-being or wholeness or completeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken, everything fitting together. Wow. Health, I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of thy wounds. Wounds is better translated every facet of life. That God is promising well-being, wholeness, completeness in every area of life. Spirit, soul, and body. That I will restore health to you mentally. I will restore health to you emotionally. I will restore health to you spiritually. I will restore health to you financially. How many of us have some sick checking accounts right now? How many maybe have a sick IRA or a sick CD? How, how many of us have a coughing, wheezing, sneezing uh, savings account right now? You know, God says He will restore health into that financial area of your life. And yes, He means physical health. I, I, I understand physical health. I know what it's like. For two and a half years to struggle with a debilitating disease. I know what it's like to go to a doctor after the, the they said the results of the third MRI was in. I know what it's like to drive to the doctor's office after the third CAT scan was read. I know what it's like to drive and hope that there's something wrong. Hope that they found the tumor they thought was there. Hope because I was so tired of, of being told time after again, we can't find anything. We don't know what it is. The results are non-conclusive. We don't have any idea. We know you're sick. We know there's something wrong. We just don't know what it is. For two and a half years, I couldn't fly on an airplane. Two and a half years, I couldn't drive by myself. Two and a half years, I would be standing there in the pulpit preaching perfectly fine like a house of fire. And then 30 seconds later, I was on the floor convulsing in mad vertigo, just massive vertigo, having no idea where I was. For two and a half years, I know what it's like to not walk in health. Finally, the day came when the right diagnosis came and I, I had what's called Meniere's Syndrome. Anybody ever heard of Meniere's? Some people call it Meniere's. Okay, there's over a million sufferers of it. It's, it's a horrible thing. But finally, surgery and healing and everything. And I haven't fought with it since 97, praise God. Amen. But, but I, I know what it's like to fight something physically and have no idea what it is. I know the, 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 the depth of depression that physical ailment can come. But God says, I will restore health yes. unto you Amen. and bring healing, complete wholeness in every area of your life. I believe that before you leave this place tonight, that God will restore health unto you. Do you receive that tonight? Amen. Do you receive health? Amen. Every area, restoration, well-being, wholeness, completeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken, everything fitting together. Number two, the second area that God promises restoration. Turn with me in your Bible if you have it, if you have your Bible with you. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn to this and we're going to read it. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Joel chapter 2, 
verse 23. Familiar passage. You may have heard it many times. If you're there, say amen. 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 All right. 23 says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. Here, God promises restoration of time. That God will restore the years that have been lost. The years that have been stolen. The years that have been forfeited. The years through that, that we wasted through bad decisions, wrong choices. Zigging when we should have zagged. Sitting still when we should have moved. Moving when we should have sat still. All of those things, it doesn't matter how they were lost. God says, I will restore the years to you that you have lost. Now I wish, I really wish I could promise for all of us that after hearing this great promise, this great word tonight, that we're going to go home, we're going to go to sleep, and we're going to wake up tomorrow 10 years younger. How many of you would like that? Well, everybody over 40 would definitely like that. For those of you under 40, I can understand why you're shaking your head. No. When you hit 40, you'll understand. That's not what this is promising. What he is promising, hear this, that he's going to take the latter rain and the former rain and bring them together. Now let me just give you a little explanation of what's going on when this was written. The nation of Israel was an agricultural nation. Everything depended on the crops. The economy was based entirely upon the crops. There were no crops if there was no rain. And the latter rain and the former rain, rain were very distinctive and they were vital. They were necessary. The former rain is the rain that would come in springtime. It's the rain that would come and moisten and soften the earth so the seed could be planted. And the seed would go in undamaged. That was the former rain. It was necessary. Then there was about a six month time frame and then the latter rain would fall. The latter rain was necessary to once again loosen the soil so the harvest could come up easily. So the harvest would not be broken while it was brought up. And what God is promising here is He's saying, here's how I'm going to restore time to you. That I'm going to bring that latter rain and I'm going to bring that former rain and I'm going to bring them together in the first month. That he's going to accelerate what used to take six months is now going to happen instantly. That he's going to put those two things together. That on Sunday night, we're going to plant our tithe. We're going to plant our offering. And on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of the very same week, that's when the harvest is going to come in. No more waiting six months in order to retrieve the harvest. Now, we see a precedent. Well, Pastor, that's Old Testament. Okay, let's jump into the New Testament. Pastor, we don't live in the Old Testament. We can't live. Okay, let's jump into the New Testament. This exact promise we see the fulfillment of in the very first miracle that Jesus performed. Now, it's exciting to me that God used the opportunity of a luxury, not a necessity, to perform the first miracle of record of Jesus. Now, there are several major laws of theological interpretation that are used in, in biblical study by scholars. And the, one of those, the law of first mention, the law of last mention. There's the law of multiple mention. Here we see the law of first mention, what happens first is of paramount importance. Okay? This is important, in other words. It's the first thing that Jesus did publicly, the first thing recorded, and it's something as minute, something as minuscule, something as non-essential as making wine available to a bunch of drunk guests at a wedding. Amen, Pastor. That's good preaching. 
I'm gonna buy my own tape. Seriously, this wasn't a broken leg. This wasn't a dead body. This wasn't a deaf ear. This was drunk people at a party that ran out of wine and, and Jesus' mother says, just go and do whatever he says to do it. And Jesus took the opportunity of Joel chapter 2 and he took a bunch of water and he turned it into wine. Now think about this. What is it that's necessary to turn water into a fine wine? One element. Time. Months, multiple years upon multiple years of time for wine to happen. And Jesus looked at that water pots, looked at those water pots, and he said, we don't have years to wait on you. So the miracle is I'm going to accelerate the time and I'm going to make this happen now. We're not waiting 13 years. We're not waiting 30 years for this fine wine. It's going to happen right now. And then we know the rest of the story. They took the wine to the master of the ceremonies and says, you've done this backwards. Most people bring the good stuff before the people get drunk. And they leave the bad stuff when nobody really cares. You know? But you have saved the very best for the last. That is the nature of God. You may think your life is over. You may think the best has happened, but God is saving the best for the last part of your life. God is saving the best for the last part of your ministry. God is saving the best for the last part of your business. God's saving the best for the last part of your marriage. And here's how He's going to do it. God's going to restore God's going to restore in our lives the years that have been lost by accelerating time, by increasing our effectiveness and increasing our efficiency. That we're going to get smarter. We're going to get wiser. We are going to quit making bad decisions. We're going to quit living that life of three steps forward, two steps back. Five steps forward, six steps back. We're going to quit. We're going to have five forward and then five forward and then five forward. We're going from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. And God's accelerating the time. What used to take 12 months is going to take one month. What used to take a year is going to take a month. What used to take a day is going to take an hour. What used to take an hour is going to take a minute. And God is going to accelerate those things in our life. Do you believe that? Do you believe God's big enough? Do you believe God's able to make that happen in our life tonight? Hallelujah. I believe that. That we're going to go out of this place and we're going to see things. Man, that used to take so long to happen and now it's happening right now. Right now. And you're going to remember the water into wine. You're going to remember that former month and that latter month coming together and God making that harvest, creating that, that miracle of time restored in your life. Do you believe that? Yes. I believe that tonight. Now, number three. The third area that God promises. Nahum chapter 2 verse 1. Nahum chapter 2 verse 1. That's in the minor prophets toward the back of the Old Testament. You know the place where, your, where the pages stick together in your Bible. <laughs> Nahum chapter 2. That's probably not going to be the name of your next grandchild. Nahum. <laughs> but it's a very powerful very powerful book, one of the minor prophets. Nahum chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now I'm reading from the New King James Version uh, because I believe God's into new, okay? I don't know why you're still stuck in the King James Version. But anyway, God says He'll do a new thing. He's he, just not paying attention. Anyway, okay. He who scatters has come up before your face, verse 1. Man the fort, watch the road, strengthen your flanks, fortify your power mightily. For the Lord will restore the excellence of Jacob like the excellence of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and ruined their vine branches. Now, this word excellence, the excellency of Jacob. See, that doesn't even have the word restore in it. We've we got to get rid of that 
King James Version. You, you songwriters, you songwriters. Okay, the New King James Version says, God will restore the excellency. The word there, excellent or excellency, is better translated dignity. That God will restore dignity into our lives. Sin, mistakes, failures, bad decisions, wrong choices, steal that sense of self-worth, self-image, dignity in our lives. And this is exactly what happened in the life of Luke 15, the prodigal son. Remember the story? The prodigal son. I think it's a better translated or a better way of viewing this story as the prodigal father. I think the father's the central figure because it paints a picture of how God views us. God the father and the son, that's us. Amen. In this story, wealthy man, two sons, younger of the two, says, I want what belongs to me. I want it now. As far as I'm concerned, father, you're dead. I want my inheritance. I want, a, I want it right now. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, you have no more impact in my life. I simply want my inheritance. He left and there wasted everything. Prodigal means wasteful living. He wasted everything. And he found himself in the most undignified position a Jewish young man could find himself. He's in the pig pen wishing he could eat what the pigs were eating. No one would have anything to do with him. He had lost all communication with everyone. And there he was. And the Bible says he came to his senses. And he says, I will arise and I'll go back to my father. For even the servants live better in my father's house. My father will recognize a good business transaction. I'll present myself as a slave. I've got a strong back. He knows I can work. So I'm going to go and I'm going to appeal to the business side of my father. And I know that he will make me a slave. And the Bible says that he went back, started his journey back, and a great while before he reached home, the father saw him. And the father ran to him. Now, have you ever wondered why the father was looking? Have you ever wondered why the father ran after him? Why didn't the father just say, I'm here. He knows where to, he, you know, he knows the way back. And so I, I know that's him. I'm just going to wait till he gets back. Why did he do that? I, I've, I've read this story and I've preached this story for years. And three years ago, I heard a, a, a Jewish historian shed some real light on this I think will help us the most egregious the most outrageous act that a son could do against the father was to leave home before the father had passed away this was a act of treason and betrayal far beyond anything we can imagine and it was punishable by death by stoning the gates, the elders of the gate, the elders of the city, the, what we call today the city council, they would sit at the entrance of the city and they would make the decisions for the city. They would make the laws and, the, uh, and all of the ordinances. And, and it was stated that if that child tried to come back to the city and tried to come into the city as that wayward, as that lost, rebellious son, then the elders had the authority to stone that child right there. And the parents could do nothing about it. The father could do nothing about it. Here's why the father was looking. Because the father wanted to see the son before the elders did. The father wanted to get to the son before the elders could get to the son. The father, how many times do you think the father, is that him? I think that's him. I better go check. How many times was it a false alarm? How many times did the father run out there just to be disappointed? It's not him. But this time, the father ran and it was the son. That's why he said, bring the robe. Bring the ring. Bring the sandals. Bring everything 
I'm going to restore him to sonship so that when he and I walk past the elders, there will be no stoning, there will be no condemnation, there will be no guilt because they will see the son as restored into the proper place and I will restore and prepare and, equip, and I will salvage his life. That's what our Father does for us. He restores that dignity into our life. He puts us back in that position. The Bible says He comes to throw Himself as a slave. And the Father would not even let Him speak. But the Father raised Him up. Oh, we're not having any of this slave stuff. And He raised Him up and put Him back in the place of dignity of sonship. And that's a word for many of you parents right now. You have a lost prodigal son or daughter. You have a lost grandchild. You have a lost niece. And you are afraid. There's fear gripping your heart that that one out there is going to try to come back, but the elders are going to get to them first. That religion is going to keep them away. That condemnation and guilt. That they're going to try to come back. But something's going to stop them. But I brought an encouraging word for you tonight. Nothing is going to keep them from the Father restoring dignity into their life tonight. Quick question. Quick question. Have you ever wondered why Goliath cursed the army of God for 40 days and 40 nights. Remember the story, David and Goliath? He came out the first day. Bring me a man that we can fight. Goliath, nine foot tall. Bring me a man. If I win, you serve us. There's no reason for all of us to die here today. You send me a man, your champion, and I'll fight. If I win, you serve us. If he wins, we'll serve you. Sound like a good deal, right? 40 days he went out. Looks like he'd have gotten a clue after day three or four, right? Looks like he like understood or, or somebody would have said, hey, this ain't happening. Why is this going on 40 days and 40? Here's why. God kept Goliath. God could only go. I mean, Goliath could only go so far. And then God said, you wait right there until I can position a giant killer in front of you. Did you hear that? The enemy can only go so far on your child or your, or your son or your daughter. The enemy can only do so much. God is positioning a giant killer right before them. And that giant that's against them will be defeated. You don't have to worry. They're not going to die. God is holding that at bay until he can position someone in front of them. And I just feel to stop right here. If you have a son, a daughter, a niece, a nephew, a, grand, a grandchild that you're believing God for, would you just lift your hand right now? That's what I thought. All over the building. Just keep that hand lifted right now. Father, I pray for every parent, for every grandparent. I pray for every uncle, every aunt. I pray, Father, right now you will give them a vision that you are positioning a giant killer in front of their lost loved one right now. That, Father, they will not die in it. They will not die from it. But, Father, you will set them free. You will keep them from all evil and bring them back whole and safe and sound. And, Father, I pray for that phone call to come this week. I pray for that email to come this week. I pray, Father, right now for news of their lost loved one turning around and reaching for Jesus. Jesus, I pray that news will come to them right now, this week, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Do you believe God's able to save your lost loved one? Amen. Now, let's go to number four, real quick, number four. The fourth place that God promises restoration. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. I'll just go ahead and read it off here. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. In the New King James it says, I will restore double unto thee. It's often been said, but God will give you double for your trouble. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? Now, 
We know Job is where God shows an example. But this is where God promises that he will restore double unto us. I love this phrase in this verse, prisoner of hope. Let that sink in. Get a picture of what this is saying. A prisoner of hope. What is a prisoner? A prisoner is one that's bound. Their hands are bound. Their feet are bound. They're put in a very small room that has four walls and there is no escape. There is no way out. Think about this. Right now, I'm a prisoner of hope. That no matter where I turn, no matter where I go, I run into the hope of God. I'm never free from the hope of God. I'm never free from the hope of God. I'm bound up. I'm encompassed. I am surrounded by the hope that God will set me free. The hope that God will heal me. The hope that God will deliver me. There's never a place I can go that I am without hope. Isn't that a great promise? That look at your neighbor and say, you're a prisoner of hope tonight. You are a prisoner of hope tonight. Now here God promises something very incredible. God promises He will restore double unto us. Why does He make this promise? Why does He make this promise? Genesis chapter 12. God wants to fulfill the promise in Genesis 12. This is where we are heirs of God. Galatians 3 says we are heirs of God. And we are heirs to the promise that was made to Abraham. We are grafted in. We are adopted in. We are now in the family of God. We are now God's chosen people. That we are heirs to the promise of Abraham. And this is the promise in Genesis 12. That God says, I will make your name great. I will bless you in order to be a blessing. That God will restore double. How many of us need God to restore double in our finances? Yes. Yeah, I, I got both legs and, a, and both feet up if I could. God had a family that was in famine. The family thought the brothers, they thought they were taking the young, next to the youngest, Joseph, and putting him in slavery, selling him into slavery. They thought they were doing it for the death, the ill will of that child. But we know the story. Through slavery, through the prison, then promoted into the palace, Joseph was made second in command of the entire Egypt entire known world at that time then the brothers came begging for food Joseph revealed himself and the brothers said oh no don't kill us and Joseph said I know you think you did this for ill but God has done this for good God has placed me so I can be the deliverance for our family I believe I'm looking at a room full of Joseph's right now. I believe that God is positioning you to be the deliverance for your entire family. That God is going to so bless you financially. He's going to so double everything that's been lost. He's going to double your finances, double your business, double your wisdom in that business. That God is going to so multiply your financial well-being that you are going to be the one that will be the salvation financially for your family, their family, their family. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That's right. And God is developing that and He's going to restore double in your life. I believe you have tonight been anointed with the Joseph touch, with the Joseph ability to raise up great wealth so that you will be the one to provide for your family. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe God's able to do that tonight? There's nothing more frustrating for a believer than to see a need and not be able to meet it. That's just, that just breaks our heart as believers. We see the need, and, but we don't have what it takes to meet that need. One of my favorite stories that Jesus told 
the disciples came and it was needed to eat the final, the last supper. And Jesus said, I want several of you to go into the city, find the man with the pitcher in his hand, follow him and everything will be prepared. Now these are disciples. These are, are, are following Jesus. These are people that, that were in the flow. They were in the, they were with God. But yet, they didn't have enough. They had to go find it. They went into the city, and there they found the man with the pitcher in his hand, a water pitcher in his hand, and that man led them to the upper room. I believe it's time we switch positions. I believe it's time we quit looking for the pitcher, the man with the pitcher, and we become the man with the pitcher in our hand. I believe it's time that we quit looking for a miracle and we become the miracle. I believe that God is positioning every one of us here to be miracle makers in every area, including finances. Amen? Do you believe that? Yes. Lastly, the fifth place that God promises, and I'm closing. The fifth place that God promises restoration, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 3, rather, beginning at 19. Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which was preached, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. The New King James says restoration. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restoration of some things. Restoration of a few things. Restorations of every other thing. How many things? This is the time. Now is the season of restoration of all things in our life. How many believe that Jesus is coming back? You believe that? How many believe that Jesus is coming back soon? How many believe Jesus could come back at any moment? Yes. Okay, that's what this verse is saying. We live in the time that Jesus so desperately wants to come back. Jesus is like on the very, very uh, portals of heaven, the very porch of heaven, looking over, looking at the Father, saying, Can I go? Can I go? And the Father's having to receive him. The Father said that word receive is better retain or hold back. God is having to hold, the Father's having to hold the Son back, and He's saying, you've got to wait. The Holy Spirit is on the earth, and you can't go back until the restoration of all things have happened. That's what we're living in right now. The Holy Spirit is doing the Father's work, restoring all things in our lives. But pastor, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've lost. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. With man, it might seem impossible, but not with God. For with God, how many are with God tonight? For with God, some things are possible. With God, half the things are possible. With God, all things are possible. If we can believe it, God will make it happen in our lives. Would you bow your heads right now? Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is true. Your word is real. Your promises are for us tonight. And I pray right now for every person that's here, every person that's watching by way of video, every person that's listening by way of CD. I pray, Father, yeah, that thing that they're thinking, it's impossible. I pray, Father, give them faith that it is possible. Everything that's been lost, everything that's been stolen, everything that's died, I pray, Father, restore right now. Restore health. Restore years. Restore dignity. Self-worth, self-image. 
Restore right now lost loved ones. Restore families. Put marriages and families back together. I pray you will restore finances, restore double right now. Father, restore all things. As I've been praying, you've been thinking. As I've been praying, the Holy Spirit has been bringing things up. As I've been praying, the Holy Spirit's been taking things that you had pushed to the back of your the very deep, darkest recesses of your mental capacity. The, the, the things that the devil has convinced you to bury and go on and forget about. All of those things, the Holy Spirit's been bringing those things up. The Holy Spirit's been bringing those things. Yes, that can be restored. Yes, this can be restored. Yes, this can happen in your life. And I encourage you right now, believe that all things are possible. If there's something in your life you want God to restore. If there's something in your life, something I've said tonight, something the Holy Spirit has shown you, that He will restore to you. You want God to restore it. Just stand up right now. There's something you want restored in your life tonight. There's something right now you're believing God for. Restoration. Hear the voice of the Lord from Jeremiah 30, 17. The Lord says, I will restore. Lift both hands with me right now. Let's pray this together. Say, Father God in heaven. Come on, pray it out with some passion. Father God in heaven. With my hand uplifted. With my heart wide open. I'm asking you now. Restore health unto me. I'm asking you now. Restore the years that have been lost. I'm asking you now. Restore dignity to my life. I'm asking you now. Restore double in my life. I'm asking you now. Restore all things. I believe all things are possible. And I'm asking you now. Restore my dream, my hope, my vision. Restore now relationships. Restore my family. Restore my finances. Restore my life. Spirit, soul, and body. I'm reaching for it now. I'm believing for it now. And I thank you, Lord. It's mine. I will see it. I will experience. I will have it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Let's thank you for it right now. is going to go on a missionary trip to Brazil. It is something that he has done many times. Uh, sometimes Brazil is a, a powerful country uh, with the Lord. And sometimes uh, people 
big ministries in America will go to Brazil and they will hold big conferences in the wealthy cities and people will come and pay to be there but this man goes to the villages this man goes to the small places people come in for free and he pours into local pastors pours into local people of God and lives are transformed and changed it is a powerful powerful thing tell us about the upcoming trip well God has given us the vision of trickle down impact remember we're called to be salt and light impact and influence make a difference change and God's opened the door for a city called in city called Fortaleza it's the fourth largest city in the country it's up by the equator in the northeastern part of the country very similar to Houston on, right on the, the water and we go into the inner city we, we go into where there's dirt roads we go into uh, I spoke in 13 churches the last time I was there last summer and only one had air conditioning and uh, very primitive very uh, it's like it's like they stopped in 45 or 50 it's like literally going back in time and these churches are, are, are blossoming they're, they're popping up everywhere there's a great move of evangelism and they'll take uh, like one gentleman I met was a pharmacist and great business guy great pharmacist but he loved God and they just put him on a corner and in six months he had 300 people and he said I have no idea what I'm doing and so we go in to train the pastors we're having a four-day conference morning noon morning afternoon and evening my son david is going with us so he's he's a worship leader so we're adding worship conference with it so we have a pastoral leadership a training and worship leader training uh, conference going at the same time uh, these were we started out with 13 churches and 28 pastors then we went the second year we had 35 churches and 70 pastors and about 600 workers then this year we're going to have over a hundred churches 250 pastors and about a thousand workers so see how god is building this and building and giving us great open doors and imagine being able to impact a hundred churches talk about trickle down impact we influence the pastor we help the pastor the pastor influences and helps the church the church influences and helps the city amen so that's what our vision is is to go in and multiply our efforts by getting the leaders and impacting the leaders so i, I go on my own nickel I, I go on my own expense because these churches uh, they can't afford and they're so thankful they're so appreciative because they've heard about the big conferences maxwell goes murdoch goes uh, all of the leaders go to fortaleza but the churches i go to they can't get there they can't afford the, the, the cab fare. They can't afford the bus fare. So we go in and we are, we're meeting a need where people can't get. Amen? And so I, if you would help me, the, there's a principle in the Word. There's those who go and there's those who stay by the stuff. Amen? Remember Ziklag? David went after to recover all, but he wasn't going to be messed with again. He said, half of you guys are going to stay by the stuff. And when he came back with all the spoils of war, when he came back with the victory reward, he shared it equally with those that stayed by the stuff. Because he said, I couldn't go if you didn't stay and send me. So that's what I'm asking you. I'll go. I'll take the two weeks. I'll preach in 95 degree heat, 10 o'clock at night. It's the equator. It stays 95 degrees, 24 hours a day. My first trip, I thought, at least I'll get up early in the morning and have a break. I got up at 6 in the morning, walked out of my hotel room. It was just as hot at 6 o'clock in the morning as it was at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, it's 95 degrees year-round in this city. Okay, so I'll go and I'll, 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 I'll make it happen if you help me make it happen. I can't go without your help. Amen. Okay, I, let me just say, I don't know of a better way to impact a nation more than pouring into the local pastors. Uh, and, and I love that you go to the pastors that can't afford to go to the big places. So I think this is a phenomenal thing. Now I know there's very few people in here that are rolling in wealth yet. It's coming. But, but I know that all of us could probably or a lot of us could probably shift things around 
Don't do that this week that we were going to do. Move things around a little bit. Move that here. Move that there. Wait on this. And just about all of us probably could find a way to get $50. So I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. But God has blessed us with this man of God. So I want everybody to do 50 if you can. If you can't, do the best you can. Okay? And let's see God move for this man. Someone might be able to give a lot more than that. But I believe if we all together, can, we got to give outside of just exactly us here. We got to we got to give to people. I know that Shaw has a missionary, a powerful DVD ministry that has ministered to thousands and thousands, and we've supported that here in Africa. We're going to support it more. And I know that um, uh, we've supported Justin uh, in his ministry to Africa. I give every month to that. So, uh, and we've supported it here in this house. It's really important. When we have an opportunity, we don't support, uh, as a church, monthly missionaries. So when we have a, an opportunity to pour into mission work, we need to take it seriously. Our worst day in America is better than 90% of the world, their, their, their best day financially. Uh, Mark, you were in India for a long time, and, and it's, it was so dirty and so poor, and millions of people piled on top of each other. We live in sprawling houses. If you have a 1,500 square foot house, that's a sprawling house. We live in sprawling houses with air conditioning, and, clean, and it's clean, and we live with such dignity and such wealth compared to most of the world. So today, let's help people that are not as fortunate as us. Is that okay? Can we do that? If you need an envelope, lift up your hand. You can give out credit card or debit card. If you're writing a check, make it to City Church of Dallas. Hallelujah. Singers, get ready to come up if you would. Pastor Bob, that was wonderful. That was a wonderful word, a wonderful message. I'm so glad y'all are here. Will y'all come back? You will? You will? You will? Will you come back? This is your church. You know that, right? Eddie, come back. Okay. <laughs> Cody, you better come back. <laughs> I know this is not, Dallas is not rural Louisiana, but it's still good. <laughs> All right, Saber, we love you. Amelia, we love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rob, I'm glad you live here now. You got to come back. Come back from Turkey. Every second I'm living is a second. I live for you every minute. I'm breathing.
forget. <laughs> Let's get singing though. Cody is out there. His CD is great. And your pastor wrote some songs on there. So it'll bless you. Um, that's awesome. And his preaching is great. Uh, don't forget, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., corporate prayer. This last corporate prayer, Tuesday night, was out of sight. It was anointed. It was powerful. It was awesome. 7.30, uh, it's church. It's typically an hour-ish, okay? So come and be a part. It was it rocked, it rocked out last Tuesday. It was awesome. It is an experience. That's we call, why we call it the Tuesday night experience. I want you to do two things tomorrow for Memorial Day, if you will. Call at least one person that's a veteran or that's serving right now and thank them for their service. All right? Number two, have fun. Put trouble aside for a day. Put bills aside for a day. You can't mail it out tomorrow anyway. Put everything, all the mess aside for a day. And promise me you're going to enjoy yourself and kick up your heels and have fun tomorrow. Is that all right? Woo! I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I will bless you while I live. the blessing of the Lord over you. I decree that you're above only and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. Things are starting to change and shift in your life. Change is coming. You're turning from the uh, borrower to the lender. From the one with their hand out to the one supplying someone else's need. Something is turning and changing in your life. I decree restoration in your life in the name of Jesus. Healing in your body. Salvation for your soul in your mental place you've been in. I speak deliverance and freedom and debt cancellation is there a witness in this place hallelujah be blessed thank you so much for watching this web broadcast of city church of dallas god is doing so many things it's blowing my mind i thought we would be a local church but we become an international church through the internet so what I want you to do, we have people in Iowa, people in Michigan, people all over this country that are sending in support. And because our church is bigger than this room that we're in, and you can feel the actual presence of God, and you are ministered to right over the internet. So if God should lay it on your heart, I want to encourage you to tie. If you don't have a home church, if you have a home church, tie there. If you don't, send your tithe in here to City Church of Dallas. Go to City Church of Dallas. This is how you spell it. Dot com. You can pay on PayPal there, a secure website, or you can send into the address or call in your gift. I promise you, lives are being changed through our prison ministry, nursing home ministry, our AIDS ministry. We feed the hungry, and God is really doing something special. But we're only a little bit more than a year old, so we need people to give. God bless you. I appreciate it with all of my heart.